everyone welcome back to my channel in this video I'd like to talk to you about the concept of micro learning I recently got some ads on my phone for some apps or something you have to buy or subscribe to for micro learning and the way they market it is in opposition to doom scrolling now realistically that's not gonna happen but I do like the idea of micro learning and it's something that I've been doing for some time and I'd like to recommend to you some books that have helped me kind of micro learn as I go along and introduced me to new topics um, and there's a style of book that I think kind of stands in for this very particular niche if you can think of a book right now where like I wish I knew the contents of that book if I could just touch it and through osmosis or something I could just learn all of the information but I'm not gonna sit down and read it it's it's too much I'm not gonna retain any of the information it seems a bit long it's kind of books like that where it's like you know that you're not gonna sit there and read it cover to cover but if you were to divide it in daily chunks or if it's already pre-divided into daily chunks it kind of helps and there is a concept that has been kind of going around uh, self-improvement YouTube I think it was in the book Atomic Habits but it is a concept I've heard before from like TED Talks where it's habit stacking so basically if you're already doing something throughout the day that you know you do consistently to add this new thing that you want to do to it so for me there's two things that I know I do every day one of them is have my morning coffee and the second is to take a bath or a shower so what I've done is I have two books going on at all times throughout the entire year where there's a concept of micro learning in it so usually with my morning coffee it will be a micro thing about philosophy and with my shower thing it will be something new from around the world or like a an animal a plant something like that so i'm going to share with you some of the books that i've enjoyed and learned from now you will think oh you know like if i do this every day i'm not going to retain all of that information it's gonna go through one year one out the other and that's probably true <laughs> i don't remember a lot of all of these things but i think when you are introduced to something that sparks something in you or you know just like something inside of you connects to a, a line or something you will take note of that so i'll share with you from the books what what i connected to so as i've mentioned in a few videos i do like to be introduced or dabble in philosophy writings but i am not a philosopher and i'm definitely not an expert in philosophy i don't know enough and i don't know what to stick to i noticed in the philosophy realm people kind of stick to you know i'm a stoic or like i only read a continental philosophy and for someone who doesn't know the whole range like how do I know I will enjoy a philosopher if I haven't heard of all the other ones so I got this book a philosophy a hundred essential thinkers and this book covers one philosopher every two pages basically and it starts all the way in antiquity to pretty much present day and it'll tell you a bit about them so where they lived what they were about and what was their main discovery or philosophy or thing that they started and sometimes some people kind of strike a chord if someone talks a lot more about time i find that a lot more fascinating than others and i'll jot them down so i've been introduced to some names that are not kind of mainstream philosophy people that I've never heard of and I would have never come across had I not just tried this book. So this is like a great introduction for people who don't know anything about philosophy and they don't know what they would like to stick to. So this is like an example, right? And a hundred philosophers, if you read this, like let's say with your morning coffee, you're still done this book a third of the way through the year and you still have at least two other books with that habit that you've tackled on in the morning right so another one that is on this line of thinking is um ryan holiday's books so this year when the year started i decided to start reading the daily stoic every morning and i got the daily stoic and the daily dad because it was a cool bundle on kindle and i thought why not and every single morning I read one from each. It's honestly a paragraph long. It's mostly like Seneca, Epictetus, Marcus Aurelius, um, like the Stoics. 
I still got introduced to a few new concepts and new thoughts. And I think for stoicism at least, it comes very close to the self-help genre today. I think a lot of its messaging has been adopted by the contemporary self-help or self-developing sort of scene, right? So reading something like that in the morning kind of pumps you up for the day a little bit or it makes you feel more organized. It feels like you've accomplished something and you have a new thought in your head. And for example, the Daily Dad kind of has sections so it kind of drills into you for an entire month one concept so you get kind of repeats of that same concept like for example the daily dad starts off with what you say doesn't matter as much as what you do because when you have children or little ones looking up to you they will imitate your behavior over what you say so they kind of drill that into you for the whole month of january because you read that every single day right and it's, it's from different philosophers with slightly different angles, but it's kind of that consistent messaging. And in a weird way, it kind of sticks more because you're doing a whole month of one concept. It just, it sticks with you a little bit, or at least the lesson at the end of the day, you might not be able to quote anyone, but it, it stays with you. So that one I found fascinating. Now, another one that we've kind of read, and this was the, the bath time book, this was 80 fish or around the ocean in 80 fish and other sea life by Dr. Helen uh, Scales, which is such a cool name for someone who writes about fish, Helen Scales. So this is a stand in because this is a whole series of books. There are books about plants from around the world. There is a book about trees. And because you only got 80 to work with, again, you could do this entire series in a year through micro learning. So you do one fish per day, which by the way, Dr. Scales does not stick to a fish a day. She likes to shove a few fish in some of the days. So you get to learn about more than one species in one day. She does not like to be pinned down in one box, but you get to learn a lot. Now, did I memorize anything about all of the fish? No, but there are four fish that have stayed with me in my head and the Nautilus at least, um, has stayed with me and I learned about people viewing them as fairies in some way like there are so many cool fun facts throughout where like if something clicks with you and your mentality like you will attach yourself to a fish the trees book from what I've seen it's kind of harder to stick to it because or not stick information and it's because if I don't have a specific species of trees in my area my brain kind of like shuts down a little bit and goes like oh well i don't have that tree so like i wish i could make use of it or i wish i could go gather things from it to make tea or do something with it and and it's it's interesting how the plants and the trees um, introduce you to this whole new world of plants and trees that you might not even have access to but it might make for a fun future trip so anyway um this series i think is pretty great for micro learning so um, I could only vouch for the fish one because that's the one we've actually finished all the way to the end. It also has pretty amazing illustrations. Now, another thing that might fit into this genre of micro learning is when you've wanted to read something and you're like, look, I'm not sitting down with this at all from cover to cover. Everything will go over my head, but it's something I'd like to know. So for me, that's sea shanties. So I got this book about sea shanties and every single night before bed, I just kind of read one sea shanty and they are so short. You know, you have like one page, one sea shanty. If something connects with you, it stays. And again, if it doesn't, goodbye. Two other books that I've read in the past like this, um, not about sea shanties, but this was about ideas that authors got for a book and for a song. So these are two separate books. I'll put them on the screen. These are one paragraph long. And it goes to the backstory of a book. And I think what works great with this is one, you'll learn how some people got the spark, the idea, the creative genius moment for a work of art, like a classic novel or a story or a song that's been in the mainstream for so long. Um, so that's pretty great because you get to connect with one of your favorite authors or you get to see that beginning of the creative process. But the second thing is it introduces you to new authors if you haven't read them. Or for me at least, um, for some of them it was kind of like, I wasn't gonna read that. There was nothing interesting about it. But when you're telling me about 
the conception moment of that story, I'm more intrigued now. Like you've got my attention, like now I'm interested. Now, another thing that you might want to look into is if you have a topic of interest, like I don't know, dinosaurs or birds. You could find those calendars that are like one bird per day or one dinosaur per day or one whatever, insert your preferred topic per day. And then as you go to work, put it on your desk. And then every day you rip off the new page and then read the little paragraph about that new bird or that new species. And that will introduce you to more things in the topic of your interest. And another thing, and this is more if you want to learn more about literature as a whole or poetry as a whole or you don't know what you like. You're like, look, there's too many poets, there's too many genres, there's too many things. I don't know what I like. So this is where things like literary almanacs come in or one of those books that's like a poem for every day of the year from different poets from around the world. And if you read one of those poems per day or one of those things per day as a micro habit, eventually you might find someone you really connect to. And you know, this might depend very much on what kind of day you're having. Like if you're having a wonderful day and you're very open-minded and open-hearted, and then you come across this one poem that day and it, it hit you like a ton of bricks, then that might be the poet for you because of your mood that day. And that's just a happy little accident or a synchronicity. You don't know, maybe it was meant to be, but you could also just come across so many amazing new authors that way. And then you'll know if something didn't hit you right or like you didn't connect to that author. And, and try to be mindful when it is you having a bad day versus the writing itself being bad. It is kind of nice to keep that distinction in your head. Now, this is micro learning, so I'm only mentioning things usually about nonfiction because you know, you're trying to learn new things. But with the poetry and the, the sort of literary almanacs, it include poems and short stories. While it is fiction, it's just a way to introduce you to new things. And, and you don't have to include this into your regular reading schedule. Like this is just a teeny tiny thing you tack on to another habit you were already doing because realistically you were never gonna sit with this book from cover to cover anyway. So I would like to hear from you if you've had a book where you did one thing a day um, and I haven't mentioned it, I would really like to hear from you because I'm really interested in more books of this kind for my micro projects and I feel like nonfiction is what I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, unless you have a fiction work that like really blew your mind, but uh, I'm looking for nonfiction, so do let me know. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.